I'm gonna toss it over to Prince and their commentators, K Kikiri and Skyrion. Yeah. Hi guys. I'm the Prince of None. I'm a I'm a Zelda speedrunner. That's why we're in Zelda vlog. Um, I I booted up the wrong game by accident, I guess. Um, <laughs> I have been running T to D for a little bit, but obviously I have. I'm flanked by some of the most experienced guys in T to D that I know. Uh, I'm Kakri. I've ran a couple of uh, categories in this game, uh, and yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm Skyrion. I'm also a Zelda speedrunner, and uh, yeah, Zelda and this game just go hand in hand, I guess. They're practically identical, really. Anyway, sorry, I forgot. I was trying. To, I was supposed to do a speedrun. I was taking a sip of coffee. Um. So uh, we're just going to get into it, I guess. This run's kind of dense. It's going to move kind of fast. But ideally, there's three of us here. We can get through most of the explanations pretty easily. Um, this game, uh, for leaderboard purposes, has an auto splitter. Uh, but obviously, for the uh, marathon setting, uh, I'm going to be just uh, counting down. When I, start new, when I say start a new game, we're going to start the timer. So it's going to be in three, two, one, go. Let's go. So this game starts with an intro sequence uh, that we would usually uh, uh, dialogue skip through. Dialogue skipping is when you uh, close the game and then uh, load back in. And what that does is usually skips a line of dialogue. Uh, that is a thing that is allowed in this category because we are running quitouts. Uh, in no quitouts, obviously, you can't do that. But... Yeah, so every time you... Uh, quit out to, back to the main menu to make a save. Uh, the um, and when you resume back in, the dialogue will just uh, end and it will start the next one. So if it's a long dialogue that takes like five seconds to play, and you can just quickly do a save and quit and go back, then you will just quickly advance through the dialogue by doing that. And since it's game time, that's the primary primary timing method. Then uh, the timer is paused and loads, so it does help quite a bit for that. Yep. Um. Yeah, starting off here, we just woke up from our sleep. Uh, this game is pretty nice when it comes to speedrunning because there's very low RNG involved. This first map in particular is like the most RNG heavy map in the game. Uh, and it's all just uh, the speed rolls, as we call them. So you can get a random amount of speed during the slowdowns here. Um, and I guess the map, leaving this map can vary like around five seconds uh, I, I've gotten the same like, movement five under and over so yeah yeah so it's yeah. always nice to have that out of the way early on in the run yeah true um nice to get a boost there can I get another one no um you can see on my input viewer that I have here uh that my scroll up and down are uh, bound to jump and that's going to be important for a lot of cases in this game because uh, vertical boosts are pretty important for movement and uh, some tricks and whatnot, strats. So. It is possible to get a little boost there to go down to the... Yeah, I, I practiced it a little bit earlier and it wasn't going well. You're practicing RNG? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, I was also practicing my... Um, uh, just like horizontal boosts. So we're going to skip the lantern mind, here. Room. Uh, we don't actually need the lantern. Uh, instead, like we're shit. just going to pop through the ceiling here and uh, go out of bounds really easily by doing a crouch jump to make our player model fit into a tighter space and then just spam jump and you pop through. Yep. So a lot of this run will be uh, just getting out of the map as soon as possible so you can reach the uh, end door level faster. And some more, of this map, uh, some more of this run will be quitting out immediately and loading back in. Yeah. So what so Prince just did there is a load warp. Uh, how load warps work is that each map in this game has a starting area that the developers choose, uh, which is referred to as uh, player start area 1. For some reason, the player start area 1 is right next to the refinery door in that map, which is the place that we want to go to. And when you quit out and load back into the game through load game, uh, your player model will be teleported over to player star area one for one frame and you can interact with wh whatever is in front of you for that frame so all we do is just hold hold down mouse one and you'll interact with the door just entering refinery 
So it skips that whole hub area. It's really nice. Just there, I was just doing some dialogue skips so that I can end the flashback in a good time because we have our first monster encounter of the game. There he is. We're just going to run a bit past him. Yeah, the infamous grunt, but uh, we won't get to see him too much. And also, um, right now, Prince is going to do a slippery clip. So by having the object fall onto him like that, it will push him through the wall. And this is the physics engine acting a little bit strange. We nickname it uh, Slippery Physics. And it can happen on any version of the game upon map load at random. And it's usually a rare thing, but on Windows we manage to figure out how we can have it be uh, activated consistently by running in compatibility mode. So he's running on compatibility mode and really the only thing that happens is that props will uh, behave a bit differently. So they will push you to the side instead of uh, just um, you know, colliding with your player model and not doing anything. So you can use that to push through walls and uh, gates and whatnot. So in this map right here, there's a there's a gate that you're gonna uh, turn a, a wheel to open, and it takes a bit of time. But by us using a box to push you through the gate here, you save a nice bit of time. Yeah, and slippery physics uh, has been uh -oh. known for quite a while, but. Uh -oh. It was uh, around two years ago we realized it is consistent with the compatibility mode, as Kai mentioned. So, uh, there's a couple of new strats with it. Yeah, I don't do all the super crazy stuff in this run because, I, like I said, I'm still kind of new to it. But I do, I do enough flashy stuff that I think it'll be an entertaining run. Like that? Like that. That was a really nice boost. Thanks. Yeah, it was pretty fast. I was kind of... I'm impressed. Let's see if I can get this one. I yeah, haven't so been just getting like, lucky with it. No. Just I spamming own. jump up a uh, wall you want to climb up, it usually works. So yeah. that's why, like Prince mentioned earlier, jumping uh, bound to scroll wheel oh, up and man. down so you can uh, stack jumps as fast as possible. Yeah. I went for a damage cancel by boosting off of that uh, little goop there, but uh, I failed it, unfortunately. Took a little bit of damage. And here's Come on, the give second it to me. Uh, oh, man. hub area of the game, uh, which we heard the mu music from. Beautiful music. Um, in, in the starting screen. And uh, now we're going to collect a couple of rods to uh, solve a puzzle in Machine Room. So in this map, there's one rod we need to collect. We're going to do a trick oh. here. So we can lean uh, with the two ways. We can lean with holding Alt and dragging our mouse in a direction or pressing Q or E. But we can stack both of them on top of each other and then quit out of the game, so our player gets stuck in that state, which allows us to lean through the wall. Uh, actually, our camera is uh, through the wall, but not our player model, so we can just grab whatever is on the other side. So it's very handy. Yep. Then again, I just load warped out of that room again. Gonna Cause... see a lot of load warps uh, from just backtracking. Yep. Picking up a health potion there for safety. There's a couple health potions that are sort of not super far out of the way in this route, and uh, I get quite a lot of them because I take fall damage sometimes. Bam! Another little warp out of there. Yeah, so That's like the Kate the mentioned, machine um, the machine room. Uh, so we need to fix the elevator to advance the next part of the game. And so we do need to collect uh, uh, all the parts. So one rod was there in, in study, and uh, the last two are going to be in... Um, in storage here. Yep. Storage is a really fun map. It has a lot of cool, like, out of bounds clips and movement and whatnot. And uh, there's, there's like, you can kind of get into a flow state where you're, like, you're really in it. It is very, very trick heavy. It's the, like, main speedrun map uh, of Chapter oh, One. Yeah. So lots of different routes, lots of different uh, tricks you can do. Because yeah. we collect three drill parts and two rods uh, in this entire map, so we kind of need to go all over it to collect them. They're spread spread out. Yep. And Prince is going out of bounds to just save time by like not hit hitting flashback triggers, yeah, a bunch of flashbacks uh, and cutting corners. Never mind, I'll hit that one. But it's I, that's commentator's curse. That's I'll, that's on me. This jump around with with low speed is kind of difficult. Okay. It kind of sucks, but yeah. Enable. Yeah. I pra I practiced failing that earlier uh, by failing it in practice. That's great. So, there we go. Oh, man. I'm choking. 
Watch. Yeah, so like it's pretty difficult to land on those barrels uh, when you're clipping back in because you can. It can be a bit, bit difficult to predict when your player model will clip back in bounds. Just gotta react yeah. very quickly to it. Also, ignore the cries of pain from that woman. It's not important. Yeah, so during the game, the Daniel box, will uh, relive his uh, awful memories of being in this castle. So you do see a lot of uh, scary moments like that. Oh, Another uh, crouch jump here to make the player model fit into a tighter space and then spam jump to clip through the ceiling. There we go. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll Another go ahead and pop that back in bounce here. Just going to rub our face. Let me in. Let me in, please. Yeah, so this beam has a couple different spots where it can work. Yeah. And Prince is looking like in a certain visual cue in the background to make sure that uh, he can line it up and pop back in. Come on, dude. This was hassling me in practice earlier. <clears throat> and then again, to skip backtracking, we will load warp out. So looking yeah, at the cardinal direction of uh, the cardinal direction of the level door, which is over there, and then just holding mouse one. Really simple. Bing, we're out. It's worth noting that this trick has an extremely low consistency rate if you launch the game through Steam. So we launched the no steam exe where it is 100% yeah. consistent for whatever reason. All right, now we Heading. collected all the parts for the machine room puzzle. So yeah, now we get to do just... machine room, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I took my laudanum, so I, my menu is going to be weird. Uh, the next Doing a couple laudanum dialogue skips here uh, in morgue. Yeah, Morg. Yeah. Just a couple of dialogue skips so that my movement speed isn't messed up when I finish this uh, lever puzzle here. And in the other direction. Yeah, there's a couple of different ways you can solve this puzzle, and my favorite one is definitely from uh, Terra Vortrix. Um, oh, yeah. Like, it's <laughs> a segmented run from back in the day where he just picks up a chair and just smacks it at the lever puzzle, and, and it, all yeah, the it levers just... end up in the right <laughs> position. <laughs> it's so awesome. All right. Here's the next puzzle part. That was rough. So this map doesn't really have a lot of glitches in it. It's just uh, movement ah. and juggling the props. Uh, Whatever. And that's it. about it. Yeah, so one Damn. of the unique things about this game is that you have uh, fluid control over like the props in this game. Like Typical puzzle games, you have things in your inventory, which we do have in this game, but this is one example where you're actually uh, physically bringing the uh, props with you and like inserting them in like sort of in real time, if you can say that, mm -hmm. um, instead of just like opening your menu to uh, attach something to uh, an object. Yeah, all the puzzles are like overworld puzzles, basically. Yeah, and the next game, A Machine for Pigs, has more of this kind of like physical puzzle instead of like oh, menuing. Uh, this game has a mix of both. Uh, I said, thank you. And load warp out. Save six seconds to PB on that uh, on that split. Nice. <clears throat> and that's about it for chapter one. Yep, Two elevator chapters time. to go. Now's a great time for donations if we have any. Or anything else that you have to say, Liz? Uh, we did have a donation from one of our helpers for this event from ADN. Uh, they said, anyone who hasn't played TMC, play it. Minish Cap, Minish Cap. <laughs> also, Pat Gang, rise up. Shout out to 31 Jason, the goat, also um, on tech for this whole event, doing a great job. And I believe Cat is in the lead now. I'm not sure. Let me double check. Keep it that way. Yes. Uh, it's not in the lead yet, but it can be. If you donate now, make sure to select your polls and put Cat ahead of Dog. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Get some micro redders on that auto scroller. <clears throat> Pet the Delilah. <laughs> Pet the Delilah. She's actually sleeping right now in her cat tree. So cute. Um, anyway, uh, now we're starting chapter two, which is like a little bit more technical in my experience. Like the second, the second half is more dense, I think, than the first half. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely where the run begins. Yeah. So we're in a flashback right now, which means we're slowed down. But grabbing this rock for some reason. Uh, speeds us up just a little bit, not to full speed, but enough to save a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. Really cool threat. 
And this is uh, one hammer. encounter with the the monster the with, with the grunt where we're seeing him inbounds and oh yeah, we want to avoid him, but we also want him to slash at us first so we can stagger Hello. for a bit. Because when monsters attack you, um, like, like they stop to attack you, so we purposely want to go up and like run right by them so they can try to slash and miss us, and then mm -hmm. uh, they won't attack you during flashback, so he's fine. Yeah, so we use that flashback to our advantage. It is possible to like do this whole sequence without hitting the flashback, but he will be like, oh, yeah. right on, up on your neck, and uh, yeah, it's quite scary. It's actually like one of those people often ask uh, horror game runners like, "Don't you get scared?" And most of them just say, "No, nah, I'm so used to it. Like I know how the game works." But like this yeah. map can still like get you sometimes when he's like super close. Oh yeah, true. If you're not doing, run. yeah, no. If you're really sort of down on the wire, then obviously like the feeling of being pursued by something is never going to be not scary. Uh, exactly. But normally, I play it pretty safe, so I don't have any issues. Especially when audio doesn't add up and you think he's 10 meters away. <laughs> yeah. All right, these rocks are kind of a hassle. I'm going to try to not mess myself up here. Never mind. There we go. Oh, that was good. That wasn't too bad. Uh, excuse me. Oh, yeah, I'll note now, I'm going to go ahead and do a boost out of bounds and then do some out of bounds movement because this is this is TDD, uh, any percent. But Yeah, uh, so we're uh, skipping a locked door by just going out of bounds here. Yeah. There is yeah, sort of a, a not real incentive, but it's sort of a, sort of a fake bid war. Um, uh, I can either save or kill the animals later on in the run. There's a there's a cow that I can either set on fire or not set on fire. So get those bids in. I didn't clear this with anyone. I'm, like, this is the first time anyone's hearing about it. But go ahead and do that because I said so. All right, so Prince is going to do uh, a flashback skip here. So he's going to try to boost up this nah. pipe to uh, avoid hitting a flashback. This flashback is pretty long, so it saves a lot of time in RTA to get this. Come on. Oh, unfortunate. But you can retry since this is quit out, so just loading yeah. the save back in. So in a regular quit out speedrun, uh, a lot of people would just a dialogue, uh, spam, like dialogue skip to spam through the dialogue here. But, uh, which is like slightly faster than doing what Prince just did, but for a marathon setting, this is much faster. So he just yeah. jumped up onto that pipe and then jumped over the the trigger for activating the flashback. You're supposed to lower the bridge in this map and then enter the morgue, but we can just do a vertical boost up to the platform and just enter morgue. Yeah. So this part of the game actually has a lot of um, actually has a lot of skips. Um, Similar to like uh, some of the skips in previous hub areas, like um, you're supposed to like do a lot of puzzles Come to like on. advance to the next part in, into sewers. So you're supposed to get an antidote and also lower the water level. Uh, we do need the antidote, unfortunately, because clicking on the level door to sewers without it uh, means that like it, you it won't load oh, the next. Oh really? Map. Okay, cool. Hundred percent certain I was going to take damage there. <laughs> but we can skip uh, lowering the water level, so we'll see that in a little bit. Yeah. Also, come, there's a lot of like gore and dead bodies and stuff in here, and in a couple of seconds, I'm going to be um, tapping a corpse's head like a tree. So if you don't want to see that, I would suggest looking away for a little bit. I will tell you when the coast is clear. I should pop my laudanum here. I want to look. I'm look at those at. feet. Nice. Uh, if you don't mind gore or dead bodies, then you can stare intent intensely at the screen. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. And this is how we get the antidote. I'm going to look over here so that I can uh, do a load warp out. <coughs> and the squeamish can look back, back towards the screen now. Because I'm out of the morgue. And that's about it for this hub area. Now we just need to... Uh... Enter sewers. There's a very precise. Nice. Clip. Oh, oh, second nice. try, really nice. That that clip oh, right there is, uh, I think, pixel perfect, and the angle needs to be very pr precise for it to work. Yeah, I remember to go for it. I haven't been going for it in practice, but I remember this time. That's really great. So you're like falling down and right. grabbing there's the ladder. A, uh, like, there's right a monster encounter right here. Hopefully, it's a poofer. Nice. Let's go. Let's go. RNG chance of being a poofer. And uh, if not, then it's a whole bunch of irritating out of bounds movement to avoid it. That's really lucky. All right. I'm going to make a safety save here. 
because this out of bounds is kind of stupid. Yeah, so Prince wants to avoid moving as soon as he's clipped through because the space you can stand oh. in is very narrow. Yep. So I got the I got the clip like in um Nave 2 where I like after I stopped sprinting I got it. There we go. Like when you enter this map Pretty flashy movement on a, on a good run, your your nerve starts to kick in because this is like the map of the speed run. No fall yeah. damage, really good. That was yeah, amazing. I, if you if you hit like the very top of the arch, I found out that you can just completely skip the fall damage from there. Yeah, and it is pretty difficult to do because that wall is kind of jagged, so it wants to push and it you. And it wants to push outwards. you. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, as you're boosting up it, so uh, that was really fortunate. Really well done. Come on. And you will see Prince uh, climbing up this ladder really fast, and that's because he has interact bound to scroll wheel as well as uh, jump bound to scroll wheel. So he releases no the ladder and grabs it like super rapidly, and he just ascends super fast. Oh, I got the rip legs. Ugh. Um, you got a potion? Yeah, I do. I don't want to burn it though. Uh, Thing sir? is, though, the fall damage. Oh, because will, the fall damage will. Be, so yeah, I would, you're right. I would burn, I burn it. Yeah. Ugh. Whatever. Lining up here for my fall damage cancel. Here it comes, rip legs. Nice. Yeah, the ceiling there uh, catches you. It's really nice and uh, reduces your fall. Those Otherwise jumps around be, that um... I just did are a lot harder than they look. I made it look kind of fast, but it is not easy. I failed those a million times. Oh! <laughs> okay, Same whatever. with that one, yeah. I've uh, I remember learning this game and like these jump like that jump around at the beginning and also the last one there uh, definitely got the best of me. I was on PB pace. All right, here we go. This should work. Maybe not. Nice. All right, but yeah. So this one's kind of tight and this one's even tighter. I'm back up here. All right, here we go. This time I'm going to take it a little bit slower. Oh my god. Okay, cool. I guess this is where I choke. Marathon setting. There's also a um, backup clip. or. Uh, oh, why am I not doing that? I, I, that was in my route. <laughs> Nobody could have said that earlier? God. <laughs> I mean, you were kind of gaming. You were like going yeah. for... I mean, I was gaming. Yeah, it. sure. Oh man, this sucks. <laughs> I just learned it like yesterday, so that's why I forgot about it. And I haven't practiced this map today. Please let me up. Thank you. Good thing the the autosave is very close though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that first clip out is kind of a hassle. Alright, let me in. No fall damage. Let me in. Please. Please let me in. This is a bit a bit of an RNG clip too. Okay, cool. Oh nice. Landed on the torch too and Yeah. Avoid fall damage. All right, now we can proceed with the game. I'm still ahead of PP. <laughs> My PP's early game was so bad. All right, so this is choir entrance. We're heading down to the choir. We're heading down to the choir. Ooh. Um, uh, and there's a lot of opportunities for horizontal boosts here. Sky, please explain how horizontal boosts work, because I still don't know. So... Um... The idea is that you want to hit a slanted slope uh, with as much piece, as much speed as possible, so you can carry that speed in the direction where you turn to. So if you hit this little limp at the right angle and then turn your camera and keep jumping, then you can carry that um, that speed um, forward. And it's like you want to, you want to keep jumping afterwards so you reduce friction. And the more fall speed, like the more speed speed you have going into it, like if you're falling from from uh, quite high up, then you can get a really really um, fast horizontal boost. And this map has a lot of those pillars, so you can try to land on them uh, all throughout the map. No, I don't want to start a new game, actually. I lied. I considered resetting, but I decided no. I'm going to I'm gonna tough it out for the marathon. Yeah, so a quick little uh, load warp there to uh, reduce some, some backtracking. Yeah, and then we just immediately turned around and went back in, because... Like you said, save backtracking. My boyfriend pointed out just a couple minutes ago that these look like bread. And I agree with him. They do. Mmm, bread. Me too. So Prince just picked up the first uh, orb piece. He's going to pick up two more. 
uh, in this map. So the, the goal of the game at this point is to get all six orb pieces so we can access the, the final part of the game. We're not actually going to assemble the orb, which you would do that casually. Was that was a great boost. Uh, but just having them in your inventory is what's required to um, oh, yeah, activate we the last the chapter. Right now. Pick. Decide. Somebody in the Save. call. Save. Okay. Well, too late. <laughs> oh, no. All right. We're not going to set it on fire, though. There. There's the tinderbox. Wait. Did I not pick up the tinderbox? There we go. This jump is kind of sketchy. There we go. And then we're going to close that bounds right here. And we're not going to. Okay, cool. I was really scared. Like every single time I've gotten that uh, that clip second try because I just passed right through the pillar there. Uh, There's a lot of tricks uh, at this part of the the map. And then uh, you could save. Yeah, safety oh, yeah, save after uh, after this boost. Yeah. Because <clears throat> there is. Uh... I'm going to be trying to damage cancel uh, off of this pillar to my left here. You can see right here. And uh, it sometimes fails, but like that. Yeah, so the save. wall there. That's why we save. <laughs> that's why we save. The wall there kind of can push you out if you're running at it from a, with a certain angle. Yeah. So the whole reason why we go out of bounds and not in the that corridor underneath is because there's a really long flashback that we yeah. want to avoid and also this looks way cooler yeah this is way swaggier no damage you love to see it very nice for me it's like 50 50 whether or not i take reduced fall damage or no fall damage there and there's the instant load warp here as well just skipping some um some backtracking And also, as Sky said, uh, collecting all the ore pieces is required to beat the game. Um, but we can already go to the last uh, like door. Uh, but if we interact with it or try to enter it, the game will just crash. So. Oh come on! That was almost fast. Yeah, it's actually Meet a up, different. Please. It's actually a different map uh, later on in chapter three, after the last like sequence of the game yeah, has whatever. been initiated. So we can go there now, but yeah, the level door isn't assigned to any map. And when you try to click a level door Please. that is unassigned, then yeah, the game will crash. Yeah, the cursed uh, version of the map spawns uh, in the, the last chapter. All right. So if Transept there are any glitch hunters uh, out there <laughs> who want to find the uh, <laughs> chapter three skip, then uh, feel free. Yeah, please feel free. This, uh, this map is just uh, movement, so if you have some donations or anything, then uh, now's a good time. Please? I, yes, we have a $2.22 donation from Windward Rats! Six. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. They said, good luck, Prince. I Thanks. love this game. Uh, as well as another 50 from Beautiful Dandy. Let's I, go, Dandy. Yeah, Dandy is being very generous today, and I really think they want the dog to win in Stardew Valley. Rats! Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all I have. Uh, just a reminder to um, contribute towards one of the polls if you donate. And can we please get some money in cats, please? Yeah. Can, like seriously, like start shelling out, guys. I know some yeah. of you guys have deep pockets. And and we love cats here. We love all animals, but we love cats. Mostly uh, cats. And if you also like cats, uh, our stretch goal for two thousand um, dollars. The person who runs stray tomorrow will wear cat ears for the run, which I would love to see. Thank you. Also save? Yes, thank you. I'll go ahead and do that now. Cause uh these uh these out of these little like lips here that I'm walking on are quite small and sometimes uh sometimes things don't go to plan. Like that. So like one pixel uh that you can walk on. Yeah, it's but luckily like the way that the game uh, calculates like collision and whatnot is like if any part of your little cylinder, your little player cylinder is on the ground, then you're good. So again, you notice that there is a corridor there, which we can just enter and go to the last war piece. But there, yet again, there's a flashback trigger that yep. is very long and we want to avoid it. Okay, nice. 
Eh, move. And little warp out. You're sens I hope that you're sensing a pattern here where uh, of go out of bounds, jump around, get the thing, load warp out. It's a very precise, uh, very precise clip here, yeah. and the camera will shake. So the ideal, the idea is to set up the the angle before the camera starts shaking. Man. And this is if one you of the see main on my reasons. Screen, there's kind of an Among Us looking guy that I'm looking at the little pixels here. I'm trying to set my cursor in his little face plate. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why Prince is running on low graphics, so that visual cue is easier to spot. Yep. And no fall damage. Too late. Uh, this is crit health, but I'm also going to chance a 1, so it's fine. Yeah, so taking fall damage there is no big deal, because um, your health will be reset uh, very very soon. There we go. It does make that clip back inbounds a little bit harder, though. Because your, your player speed is reduced when you have low health. That's why I don't want to be low health. It's because it makes you slower, and obviously the speed run is not great. Ignore the screams; they're not they're not important. Yeah, that's something I also forget to mention in my tutorial that you pointed out. Like the reason why you want to avoid taking damage is because you get slowed down. And I was like, oh yeah, that's true. I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning. That's nah, fine. I learned it on my own. But yeah. All right. Never mind. I hate this room. Blah. <gasps> you oh, died. We're about Dark to Souls text. Game. No deathless run? Oh my god. Cringe. Uh, that is a scripted death, uh, basically. The idea is that you're supposed to get into an encounter with three brutes there um, that spawn in and they're like, they just kill you and this is like a scripted sort of prison break scene. But uh, it's far, far faster to completely ignore them, just run in and then load the death plane behind you and then run into it. And there's so. a couple of endings to this game. Uh, one ending being just standing AFK in the cell and waiting for a really long time, eventually ah. the shadow will kill you and the credits roll. Um, so it's just faster to complete the game normally. And gonna grab a safety potion as well. Yep. Alright, now it's time for the hardest part of the run. Avoiding trench foot. Actually, the hardest part is waggling that door around. Uh, you have to unlock it, Prince. There we go. Um, the screen is going to shake pretty violently for quite a while. Uh, if you're sensitive to that, then maybe look away for the next minute or so. Uh, but yeah, this is just sort of a chase sequence. I'm being chased by something, I presume. I've never looked back and checked, but I assume there's something chasing me. Yeah, it is the, the shadow. So? But uh, it's quite slow, so this the sequence is pretty easy. Yeah. It is fun, though. There's a lot of, like, this. Uh, Prince? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid jump falling in the water here by uh, doing some careful jumps, which I failed. I've never been able to do it successfully, but one day. Those last couple of jumps around the corner are pretty finicky to, to land. Yeah. Because when you're in submerged in water, <clears throat> your movement speed is decreased, so every time you're jumping in water, you're saving like a few frames here and there. And Oh, well, yes, right. and water, <laughs> in quotation marks, yeah. Yeah. To answer the chat message, uh, the shadow can't kill you, I think, in any other, other spot. It, it can just slap you down to 10 HP, and it can't go under that, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Alright, walking through Yep, walking through this pink slime is uh, RNG rolls whether or not I get damaged. And yeah, uh, some fun up the slaps. here. Okay, alright. Uh-huh. Right down here, down to there. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, so this is the um, the the map with the second most RNG. Whether the the goo, the shadow will will hit you, uh, like as you're going through this this area, there will be some places where you just can't avoid it, like right here. And you can actually soft lock the game right here by getting slapped to the right, and you will clip into that uh, goo on the left on the right wall. That's funny. Uh, that's one of my favorite maps in the run, and uh, coming up is one of my least favorite maps. But yeah, so now we have all the ore pieces and uh, we have gone to the second part, of the, the second version of this map um, where uh, you have see the goo is all over the place, so you can now advance to the final level. And normally you're supposed to fix a machine, or I guess, well, destroy a machine and then fix the ore piece to uh, re uh, remove the electrical, magical barrier here, right there. Uh, but we can just run into this wall, boost up here and... Uh, just click the level door from out of bounds. 
it's far far more fun if you ask me. There's a lot of time. If and there's a problem, yeah. If there's a problem in front of us, we just go around it. Yep. <laughs> Always. We are non-confrontational in the TDD community. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Oh, very uh, nice. Avoided the fall that, damage. That jump is actually really hard. <laughs> Especially avoiding the fall it. damage. It's very tricky. Yeah. Very nice. All right, smoke him if you got him. Take all your health potions. Coming out, we have the blindfolded orb chamber, which I believe the incentive was met. Yes, yes, it was. Cool. Dot skip. Nice, very fast. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause the game, turn on my metronome, and put on my blindfold. Good luck. Good luck. You got this. I'm gonna restart. Yeah, you were just on the level text load sequence first. It saddens me to see you filled with such hate. Is vengeance really what you know? Don't do that. I realize you doubt my intentions. Why would I take such extreme measures to save your life? I'm choking. It saddens me to see you filled with such hate. Is vengeance real? Don't do that. I realize you doubt my intentions. Why would I take such extreme measures to save your Come on, dude. Okay. Nice, good job. All right, G G. <clears throat> oh yeah, that was time, by the way. <laughs> I guess I should have oh. mentioned that. <laughs> good job, Fritz. <clears throat> there he goes. All right, neat. Um, I thought was two minutes behind my PB, which for failing blindfolded orb chamber twice, that's a uh, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I have a couple of things to shout out. I have to shout out, obviously, uh, Sky and Cake for commentating. They, uh, without Skyrion particularly, I would not be running this game. Uh, obviously, Sky is a major figure in the uh, TP community. Obviously, like, learning TP. He wrote the book in a lot of cases. He also wrote the book in uh, Amnesia, t uh, And without him, I would not have gotten into this run. Um... Cake is fucking cracked at every HPL game on the face of the planet. He's insane. Um, shout out to the T2D Discord. Uh, I don't have the link offhand, but like, it's cool. They're, they seem nice. I don't really hang out there a lot, but they're all cool people. Um, shout outs, Planned Parenthood. Please donate. Uh, I will be donating later. Uh, the, a, a woman's right to choose is extremely important. Uh, a birthing person's right to choose is extremely important. Uh, and I support Planned Parenthood very strongly because uh, I have a lot of people in my life who are have been affected by it. Uh, I think that's it. Trans rights or human rights? Uh, I think that's it. I think I'm good. You guys have anything? Oh, I'm at the Prince of None everywhere, by the way. Side note, literally everywhere. If I have an account, it's at the Prince of None. <laughs> so. He's nabbed the username. Yeah, I just want to quickly add on to um, 
the, uh, the HPL Discord, like Prince mentioned, uh, will, is hosting all the games from fictional games. So whether you're interested in learning a game from the Penumbra Amnesia, or Amnesia series or Soma series, the one game, Soma 2, please, then um, that's the place to be. It was a great run. Great watch. I'm really happy to see that blind orb chamber. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. I got so scared. I was like, I can't believe I'm choking blindfolded orbs. I literally, I did it three times in a row flawlessly earlier. It's always, you know, it's the marathon curse. <laughs> it's the marathon curse. Man, I, it's the nerves, man. Yeah, I think that's everything for us. Hey, Variety and Nimbus, thanks for inviting us. I really appreciate that. Look forward to Sky's Soma Run tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. EDT. It's going to kick ass. Yep, so another one from uh, Frictional Games. Yep, and enjoy the rest of Zelda Block. Yes. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Prince, for a great run. Thank you, Sky and Cake, for the commentary. Uh, this was really fun. New game for me to see, so I hope you all enjoyed as well. Um, Coming up next, we have a very exciting Breath of the Wild Any Percent Relay versus yes, I'm so All hyped. Dungeons. Yes. I think this is such a fantastic idea. Um, but yeah, thanks again, you guys. And I think we're going to transition over to a break. Uh, just a reminder, the donation link is in chat. We have um, upcoming, uh, upcoming incentives um, later on. We've met all the ones for today. Um, if you aren't interested in Zelda, which if you're here, I highly doubt. We also have after that a Luigi's Mansion run. So look forward to that. Um, and a Goron Mines RTA race by, I, I love all these races with- I'm, I'm commentating that race by the way. Oh yeah, you'll get to hear Prince again, which is very good. Yeah, other than that, I think we're gonna toss it over to a break. Um, that's all from me. Uh, thanks Liz, I, you kick ass at hosting. <laughs> thanks, I had so much fun. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been a great time. I love Raph and the closet it supports is really important like Prince says. So bye for now, but I will see you all in chat. Uh, enjoy the music that Variety arranged, by the way. If you didn't notice on all the transition screens, um, Variety did all this music, which is just amazing. So shout out to Variety for coming up with this, working so hard to make this event truly what it is today and making sure you know we're all in line and things are going well. 